trend reversal trading strategy. That's what we're talking about today. In fact, I did a video on this same topic already. Um, and so we're going to do a five part series. The first one I did is part one, but you can go ahead and watch this. You don't have to watch them in order. And I will put the link in the description below to the first video. So after you watch this, you can go and watch that one. All right, so the issue is, the question that we're addressing is, when you get a trend, we'll just use an uptrend for our example today, how do you know when in the normal ebb and flow that when the market comes back down against that trend, whether it's going to come down a lot and you get a trend reversal, or if it's just going to be a short retrace and then a trend continuation where you might do a trend retracement trade and trade in the direction of the trend. And that's the question. Good one. Now, just a quick review of, um, of video one, but go with there because there's a lot more detail about it. So one thing we talked about was the 15 EMA here. In general, you want the retraces to come and not go below the 15 EMA. All right, so that's just one rule. And there's several different things, namely five, that we're going to put together to actually help us to determine whether it's a trend reversal or just a trend retracement. So the first one was 15 EMA. But as you can see, there's sometimes it does break below the 15 EMA, so that alone is not enough. So what we need to do is to create waves. Now, you may be familiar with Elliott waves, and the purpose of waves, whether they're Elliott waves or anything else, is really to let you know how early or late you are in a trend. We've all heard the slogan, the trend is your friend until the end. And the meaning of that is that early in a new trend, you have a more higher chance that the trend will continue. And after a trend's been going on for a while, then it's less likely to continue. So the trend is your friend until the end, really translated means it's a higher probability to trade early in a new trend than a late in, in fact, during a late um, extended trend, we would then look for reversals. All right, so that's one thing. Now, the question is, okay, what kind of tool can we use for this? So let me actually go in here and pull up my indicators, and I'll show you what uh, I got. So this is something that um, anybody can do. Most charting platforms have the zigzag indicator. So what I've done is I've added the zigzag indicator and there is some different variables that you can set up here. So this is what I like to use here. Um, well, first of all, deviation type. So for NinjaTrader, this is NinjaTrader 8. They give you two options, either percent or uh, points. I prefer percent. This way it's more universal across all markets because different markets have different increments in price. And so points is going to not be a template that you can use across all markets. Percent is, it's the percent retrace. So that's the first thing I recommend. Um, now, deviation value. This is where you got to play around with it a little bit. So, and let me pull this over here. So I've got three, I like three, pretty good. Right now, if I make this, let's say one, uh, look what happens here. Let me get this out of the way as much as possible. There we go. Okay, so if I just click apply, watch how it changes. Whoa, now we've got all kinds of little ups and downs, ups and downs, very noisy. So that that's not good. That's not good. If you get too noisy like this, lots of highs, lots of lows, lots of highs, lots of lows, then that's not going to help you. So we just eyeball that, and then we take it to two. Okay, apply. A little better, a little better. Um, three. And we're taking some of that noise out because when we talk about waves in a trend, we want you know some big movements, higher highs, higher lows is the main concept here. And so you don't want to measure every little you know movement <laughs> in the market. So that's pretty good. Now what if we went to 10? All right, let's see what that looks like. So if you bring up 10 and you apply it, it's like, whoa, okay, now it's just a straight line all the way up there and let me get this out of there. So yeah, that's measuring too many bars and that's all considered, you know, one trend. So anyway, you could play around with it. Um, generally, you know, like I would say, I would start with 3% and um, then decide, 
you know, which you like, what fits you, your style of trading, your risk reward ratios, all that kind of stuff. Oh, and I also do check here, uh, NinjaTrader has this option called use high and low. So it is using, in other words, it's marking the high and the lows of the bars, where if I uncheck that, then it's going to measure the highs and the lows from the real bodies. See that? So you can play around with that too. If you prefer that, that's great. But again, you know, look, it's just that that's one swing high, swing low, swing high, swing low, swing high. That's too long for exactly what we're going to talk about. So I like this. Um, you use whatever you want. Now, how do we determine how far we are in a trend? So this is where the wave counting comes in and really the purpose of wave counting. So down here, we go uh, one, two, three, four, five. So lower low, lower high. Actually, it's just lower, um, lower high first. And then lower low, lower high, lower low. So you could count these as one, two, three. And that's a five wave pattern down then. One, two, three, four, five. So when I said three, I'm talking about three lows. And so that would be wave one, wave two, I'm sorry, wave one, wave two, wave three, wave four, wave five. So lower lows, lower highs. And that's pretty average. That's pretty normal in a normally moving market. Now, here's the thing. Elliott Wave, I'm not against Elliott Wave. I used to trade Elliott Wave, but it's very, um, well, subjective. You know, there's the old joke if you ask uh, 12 Elliott Wave um, traders what the wave count is on any chart, you'll get 13 different answers. So that's an old joke. Um, but, you know, I've got a friend who trades Elliott Wave and he does real well. I've had software that I've tried that automatically plots Elliott Waves on your charts. It was not too bad. It's actually a pretty decent tool. I don't use it anymore, but um, I don't like the concept of taking a principle and forcing it on the market, coming up with an idea or a theory and forcing it on the market. I like to trade what the market is doing and not a theory. So that's my first philosophical reason for not using Elliott Wave. And of course, they are rather subjective because they just say, well, every trend has five waves. And so they'll measure five waves. But then when it goes further in the trend, then they actually change all the numbers and the wave counts until it fits their their theory of five. Every trend's got to have five waves. And if it doesn't, well, then they change the numbers. So it does. Um, now, I just want to look at the market and what the market's doing me, what it's telling me. So this would be an objective way. Once you got this tool on here, then it's going to be very objective. So we've got a higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low. And that's where we are right now. So this would be considered a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And you say, but seven, how can we have seven? I thought you can only have five waves. No, as I said, that's what Elliott wave theory says. But when you do a trend this way, it can be way more than five. It could go seven, it could go nine, it could go 11, 13, 15. So what's that telling you? It's telling you that, wow, we are really extended in this trend. And the trend is your friend until the end. So now you have an objective way to measure waves, which in turn helps you identify if you're early in a new trend or late in an old trend. And knowing that early in a new trend is the best time to enter a trade, then we would, again, use that as one more piece of evidence doesn't give you everything that you need, but again, use the 15 EMA along with this and then look for your wave counts. How early or late are we in the trend? And if we're early in the new trend, holding the 15 EMA. So for example, let me look. We're above the 15 EMA here. We're above it here. We're, we're on it here. Uh, the real bodies uh, are above it here. Real bodies are, above, are added or above it here. Above it or um, here. Now, here we, we break down below it, but our trend is still in place. Okay, so that's why the 15 EMA is not trustworthy just by itself. Now, uh, I do have another tool that I'll help you very much, and that is my cycle indicator tool, which identifies swing highs and swing lows. Feel free to go get it absolutely free at indicatorwebinar.com. My gift to you.